Blog Talk Radio. Okay, I think I got this degenerate piece of shit working. And that degenerate piece of shit I'm talking about is charter uh, technology. Uh, Give me a second here. Okay, okay. Get rid of this BS. Get rid of this BS. Get rid of this BS. All right, people. I thought it was about to be two days in a row. That's why I got the good brother Saladin out here to deal with that technological bullshit because uh, I do have a little IT curse from a past life. I did some shit to some robots or some shit. But, uh, no, seriously, I'm just of the... um, the spiritual ilk, so I um, I access or download from the spiritual realm. So when it comes to the mundane, linear type stuff, I do have my issues. Uh, in addition to some other things dealing with the human mind. So my issues with technology runs deep, runs deep, runs deep, runs deep. Not that technology cannot help the mind because you do have to use the mind pertaining to it. As a matter of fact, the mind created technology. The mind created the iPhone. The mind created the computer. So the mind is the ultimate computer and that's something that I just hold dear to. Let me send something out to the good people on uh, Twitter. Bear with me. Let me send some things out to the folks, to the good people in the world of social media, to let them know we will have a show tonight. See, Charter hooked me up. I got three computers, so... I had Charter to come out so I could have all three of them working at the same time. Those Ethernet uh, splinters were crap and was not getting the job done. So I was only able to use one computer at a time, which was not working for me because I move around. I have three different computers, uh, two Macs and one PC. I deal with so much. I'm typing up articles, e-books. Uh, then I'm doing social media advertising so I need multiple computers, and I think it's this charter connection, people. I really do because I'm on Twitter and I'm not getting anything. So let me pick up the iPhone, and let me send that message via iPhone. Let's see here. Okay. Let's just put show is live. Show is live. Okay. Bloop. There we go. There we go. Twitter, you're coming down on the computer. Yeah, you're coming down on the computer. Bear with me, people. 6.12, I'll do my best to get this show cracking at 6.15 p.m. Uh, take three more minutes for a little troubleshooting. I need to get the number. I need to get the number out to the good peeps here. Bear with me, bear with me. I will put call in live at 714-364-4358. Bam. All right. The iPhone is working, but these charter... Base internet hookup computers or not. Okay, well, we got two hours and 47 minutes. We're good, we're good, we're good. 613 here. We got that out to the good peeps. All right, we're going to start this show at 615. I got two more minutes. Let's see what else I can send out here in the fantastic world of social media. Bear with me. Uh, where are we going? Where are we going? Okay. Bam, 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 bam. Let's see what's going on. Man, they said this, this new, I got this new modem, new router, and it's supposed to be fast, and it is slow as shit. It is slow as shit. I'm going to call them tomorrow and have them come out and fix this thing or just take this shit back, and I can go back to the old hook up because no matter how long something takes, I'd rather just get the job done 
fuck all the upgrades and, and there's going to be problems. Because a cat like Tahuti Ma Ra don't have much of the linear time. Now, this thing straight locked me out on Twitter. So, yeah, something is most definitely up with this tech crap. Something is most definitely up. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and log out there. The most important thing is we did connect with the Hewlett Packard for the show. So, we're going to have to roll with that. We're going to have to roll with that. Good people. Because the mundane technology is acting a fool. It's one of the reasons why I don't trust technology, too, because that shit will fail your ass, unlike the human mind. Unlike the human mind. Let's see what's going on with this one over here. I got three computers in this bad boy. When I get this library together, I will take pictures of the bad boy. Sal got his place hooked up just like mine, too, with the three computers. I wonder if Sal's having, having these problems. I got to ask a good, but okay, no, this one popped on. Okay, let's see what's up here. Can I go ahead and tweet? This shit is slow as hell, too, but it did connect. But it did connect, but yeah, something's going on with it. So but anyway, we're not going to waste no more time on the faulty charter internet. Um, yeah, the faulty charter devices internet phone the internet came on then the phone was tripping us all through charter so it's most definitely something with the uh the devices the charter based device and they just hooked it up um yesterday and i really wasn't um using it until today and early in the day things were cool i noticed it you know moving a little slow and then right before the show that's when all hell broke loose the phone wasn't working internet was down so that's what happened, and that's what delayed the show. But it is 616, good people. We're about to start this bad boy. Greetings of peace and love, everyone. This is your host, Tehuti Matra, and you're tuned in to Chopping It Up Live here on Blog Talk Radio. Chopping Up Live is brought to you in part by Tehuti Matra Herbs.com, where you get the best herbal products for less. Less money, that is. Also brought to you in part by TutiMatra.com. All the information products offered by Tutti Matra, including e-books, course manuals, astrology, numerology, charts, and more. Also brought to you in part by FBDOutlet.com, where you can get my famous full-body detox for only $49.95. That's right, $49.95. And if you guys are not knowing, tomorrow is January 1st. We're coming new with TehutiMatraHerbs.com. You guys are going to see those price increases, and that is part of the strategy to speed up shipping because the people are never going to understand this process here, never in a million freaking years. So like corporate America, you just give people what they want because uh, people are dangerous and they can destroy a good thing, and it's just not worth it. And you guys know I would never in a million years sell out. The only way you can increase production is if you use chemicals. Tahuti Ma'atra does not do that, will not do that. So I came with Tahuti Ma'atra Herz.com. And you know what, people? Even with the new site and the higher prices, still got the best prices around. Still got the cheapest prices. Now, that's what's up. All right. Folks, we're also brought to you by Tahuti Matra Network. That's my new network set up by the good brother Saladin. And Tahuti Matra Network is where you can download my new film, Full Body Detox, the movie, for just $14.95. And the link is dmnetwork.tv. Again, dmnetwork.tv. The DVD of the movie, people, will be available on January 6th. I believe that's a Friday. I believe that is a Friday. The DVDs for the movie Full Body Detox will be available January 7, 2016. All right, folks, our show today is the metaphysics of money. Money, 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 money. Money. Hey, I'm a Taurus. Therefore, money is one of my favorite subjects. But I got a lot of deep stuff uh, to drop tonight. And mostly of a metaphysical or mental 
science nature. The metaphysics of money. The metaphysics of money. Meta meaning above and physics dealing with the physical. So it's above or beyond the physical. So we think of money, mula, dinero, skrilla. We think of the tangible, the physical, the coins, the bills. But metaphysics says that there is an energy behind the tangible or the physical. And people, it took me about 34 to 35 years to figure that out. 34 to 35 years to figure that out. I had to learn that money is consciousness. It's an energy. And it's something that I wish I had learned earlier because, as I said, I am a Taurus, astrologically speaking, sun sign Taurus. And Taurus, man, we can worry about money. I also have Sagittarius, moon and Sagittarius in the second house. So money affects my mood. Money affects my mood. Now, I know, you know, people are probably saying, well, too, this shit hell, it affect my mood, too. Yeah, but not more so than the Taurus. It, it's indicative of the Taurian native to have his or her mood greatly affected by money and or the lack thereof, but mostly the lack thereof. And I've interacted with some other Taurus individuals, and I remember situations whereby their money situation wasn't tight and right. And talk about some depressed people, they were depressed. So I was like, damn, you know, that really is a Taurus thing. And we all get depressed when we don't have money. But Taurus, man, it hits home for us. But you know what? doesn't matter what your astrological sign is. If you learn the dynamics, if you learn the metaphysical, spiritual dynamics of money, you're going to have a different existence here in this matrix. Now, for me personally, people, my story with money starts off like this. I grew up in the hood of Los Angeles, known as South Central Los Angeles. I came up in the typical and proverbial black Christian household, which means I came up Baptist because most black people are Baptist. It started in the South by Mr. John Baptist. Uh, slavery in America, um, well, slavery didn't really start in the South, but very prominent in the South, became the epicenter of slavery. So you put the two together, and most black people are African American, so called African Americans, are Baptists. And like my good partner, Brother Jermaine X, says, Baptist is the lowest rung of the Christian social ladder, and I happen to agree with that. So I grew up Baptist. I grew up in the family of, maternally speaking, a matriarch by the name of Willie Mae Maxwell, a devout, ignorant Christian woman. My grandmother, who I love, but nevertheless devout and ignorant at the same time. Time. So a lot of my programming, as well as the programming of my siblings, came from her. But not just her, other family members as well. Now, when I think about my childhood and money, what stands out the most is for my parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, even cousins, we just seem to not have enough money. It was always about money. When I think about my grandmother, I could hear her voice in my head right now talking to my mother. Bonnie Jean, I need some money. 
she was notorious for saying that. Dollar boy, I need some money. Grandma need some money. But again, she was Christian. And I also remember her saying negative things about money. How money was the root of all evil. Which to a logical-minded person such as myself would dictate on the flip side of the coin that poverty would be the root of all good. If money is the root of all evil and the opposite of money is the lack thereof, then the lack of money would be the root of all good, which is not the case. So, as you can see, it's very faulty thinking. And like my man Stevie Wonder said in the song, when you believe in things that you don't understand and also that don't make any sense, then you suffer, and that's what happened. We suffered. We suffered. And why? Because we were ignorant about money. My mother always told us, get your credit together. Moms push credit. Now, Pops, he didn't believe in credit, so Pops pushed gold. And he did the best he could. You know, Pops would always tell his children to invest in gold, but Pops was talking about investing in jewelry from the swap meet. You know, you know, man, buy you a Turkish rope. You know, buy you a rope. You know, buy you some gold, because if you need some money, you can pawn it. You know, he wasn't talking about precious metals investment. He was talking about the pawn shop. So he was, he was, I'm not going to say he was on the money, but he was near it. Because Pops was trying to drive home to invest, get you something that you can invest in. So I lean more towards Pops than my mom's even though today I'm not big on credit and I damn sure I'm not big on uh, pawn shops and, and things of that nature. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into it in tonight's show, but I'm into something called banking on yourself. You will never be denied a loan when you bank on yourself. I don't know if I'm going to have time to go off into that because I'm dealing with the metaphysics of money. I'm dealing with the spiritual aspect of money. And in a minute, or I should say in a little while, I should say not a minute, a minute and 60 seconds, I know I'm not going to be done in 60 seconds. But in a while, I'm going to open up the phone lines to take some questions or comments and uh, individuals who would like to call in with a question or a comment, you can do so by calling in at 714-364-4358, 714-364-4358, excuse me, 714-364-4358. I also put that number up on Twitter, the dhealthstore.com Twitter, which is also going to change tomorrow. So I came up with ignorant parents who didn't know anything about investing, who were 100% consumers and who passed that down to their children. The same people who in one breath needed money but in another breath condemned it, creating a block. And when my parents did get money, it was usually from a tax return or a lawsuit. And that's really jacked up, man, when I think about it. And it was, it was unintentional. They inadvertently taught us to equate, quote, unquote, accidents, which are really collisions, because there are no accidents on planet Earth. But they taught us that collisions led to money. I remember with my parents and, you know, sometimes my uncles and aunts would get into a car collision and the first thing out their mouths would be, I'm going to get some money. So I started to equate collisions with money. If you got into a collision, as we said back in the 70s, an accident, you're going to get some money. That's a goddamn shame. You have to be injured to get some money. You have to be injured to get some money. And then you grow up, you realize that the money that is acquired from these collisions from insurance is peanuts. It's peanuts. It's a nice chunk to poor people, but it's not going to last long. And because we don't have 
the necessary, the appropriate financial IQ, we blow that money. We blow that money. There's a reason why African Americans, or so-called African Americans, are 95% consumers, because we get money and we consume. We don't invest for return. We consume. And that's, that was the story of my childhood. Anytime we came into some money, we spent it on things. Not guns, but butter. I'm borrowing from Ving Rhames in the movie Baby Boy, guns and butter. Guns, things that appreciate in time or over time. Butter, things that depreciate, not in time, but right away. But right away. And a lot of people invest in butter because they don't have the necessary financial intelligence to invest in things that is going to appreciate in time and give them a return on their money, a return on their investment. See, that's not taught in the hood. It's really not taught in America, generally speaking, but the damn show isn't taught in the hood. And I can speak from experience. Now, I'm not mad at the maestro, my pops, for quitting his job in the early 1980s. He was the last of his brothers to wake up uh, as far as the gig or the job, how it uh, really doesn't do anything for you. It just keeps you a slave. You know, you're really working not for a living but for a killing or a dying or early dying. And that's what happened to Pops. He was out of here uh, age 50, made his transition six days after his 50th birthday. You know, he, he got, he, he woke up it was a little too late but he did wake up on the whole job thing, you know, as being a form of slavery. But there's an alternative, and Pops didn't know about that alternative. See, Pops' alternative was you leave the job and then you go to government. And for what? To get Social Security. I remember all of my uncles, when they were applying for Social Security, my mother was always helping them. She was like the secretary of the family, and I truly believe that played a role in her having a nervous breakdown in the early 1980s. But I remember my uncle saying, Social Security turned me down, and that used to confuse me because I'm like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be insurance that you pay for. How in the hell can you pay for insurance, and then when you have a need for that insurance which you paid premiums on, how in the hell could you be turned down? That, that never added up to me. But I remember my uncle saying, Social Security denied me. Social Security denied me. And eventually they would get it. And my pop was the last one to get on the Social Security train. This was in the early 1980s. Pop got on Social Security, and all of his children got a check. Myself and my three siblings, we got a check. We were getting like 400 something dollars per month, which was a lot of money to us. We were teens. We were in high school. I was rocking a jerry curl. And I said that for a reason. Because when I got my money, Okay, sorry about that, folks. I got disconnected. If you missed the beginning of the show, um, I got some new um, devices from Charter. Uh, uh, what is this? A uh, router and something, something else. All new stuff here. Wires everywhere. But uh, right now it is very faulty. So I had problems um, starting the show. I just got disconnected. So. So bear with me. We're going to get this stuff straight one day because uh, I plan to do this show five days a week, Sunday through Thursday. So we're going to get it straight. So bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. But let me drive home this point before I open up uh, the lines. So even in my early 20s, I'm like most people. I'm working paycheck to paycheck, struggling. And I thought that was normal. Because my homeboys, they were just like me. The ones who had jobs, my cousins, they were just like me. The ones who had jobs. 
So it's, you, you know, it, it looked normal, man. My parents were, you know, my mom's, not pops, because pops was on Social Security, but mom's was still working. It was pretty much the same old, same old. Mothers, you know, they, they, they do put a little something, something away. That's one thing I can say, you know, about mothers. But, you know, just keeping it real is really not enough to really make a dent. You know, but mothers, you know, they do put away, and, and they're there to bail you out, you know, with a C-note, a few hundred dollars, or what have you. And in the case of my older brother, you know, a, a thousand or, or two, which was a waste. So, man, I'm struggling, and I'm towed up. I got money issues. I don't, I'm not understanding the astrology and the tours. I got money issues. I'm messed up, people. I mean, man, I'm breaking up with girlfriends, man, because I don't have no snaps near their birthday or the holiday, Valentine's Day, Christmas. That was my solution. Break up with them a few days before the day, whatever it was. Just act the fool and start a damn fight. And then come back on the scene a few days after. All because my money game wasn't right and tight. Stupid stuff. Scheming and scamming. Scheming and scamming. Trying to come up. The hustle, the grind. I knew instinctively that that was not for me because I didn't feel good afterwards. And I used to think, even in my early days of consciousness, I used to think, it's like, damn, God, you know, you got these rich cats, man, the Rockefellers, Warburgs, like these cats, they don't even believe in you, man. And they got food on their table every night. And I said, man, it's a lot of folks that believe in you like the Coopers did, like we did. Taught to pray every night, the Lord's Prayer. But there were many days there was no food on the table. So I have to question God, what's up with that? The people who don't give a fuck about you got money. And then those of us who are stupid enough to pray to you every single fucking day, we get dogged out, we get left hanging. What's up with that? Now, Taurus, we will go there with God. I haven't heard Miss Doreen Virtue say that. And that is a Taurus attribute. That is a Taurus attribute. But I used to go there. What's up with that? Evil people. Balling. And then people, good, righteous, who want to make a difference in the world, struggling. Broke than a motherfucker. But want to do good. What's up with that? And it really ain't got nothing to do with God because this earth has been made and it's founded with certain laws and you learn those laws and you live out your existence, plan out your destiny. That's pretty much it. It's not God's fault. It's our fault. But one thing about me, I was always bold, always daring. I always questioned Always knew I was different, a quack reverse of black sheep. Always knew it. And in 1989, that journey began for me. And by 2004, it led me to where I am right now. My money worrying days came to an end. Because I learned some stuff, people, that they will not teach you in school. They will not teach you this in church. They're not going to teach you this in the matrix. But in 2004, I was introduced to the concept of the money angels. I got into mental science. I got into this stuff before the secret came out, two years before the secret came out. Universal law, the law of attraction. Around this time... I was broken, struggling. Broken, struggling. It'd be the 15th of the month and I would worry about paying my rent. But the funny thing was, I never missed rent. I had a lot, of, a lot of hard times, but I always had food on the table while I was on my soul journey. Never missed rent. And always ate and always had food on my back. So one day I said to Hootie, what the hell are you tripping on, man? You know, you have not come up short. God has not left you hanging. God, universe, creator, whatever you want to call it, has always come through for you. 
dude, what the hell are you tripping on? And it was me. It was my mind. I would give myself headaches worrying about money and always made rent. And I didn't like that, people. I didn't like that. So I put in the work. I started dealing with the metaphysical tools. I was into the crystals then, two years deep into the crystals. And I learned about the crystals that uh, promote wealth consciousness, prosperity consciousness, affluent consciousness, the citrine, the tiger's eye, the green aventurine, the carnelian, the sapphire, the emerald, the ruby, the Herkimer diamonds. Your regular diamonds. I was into feng shui, a feng shui. And I learned about my money corner, which was near the kitchen sink. So I learned to stop up the kitchen sink with a stopper. So that my wealth would not go down the drain. Now I know when you're new to this concept, it sounds stupid. But it's not. It's real. It deals with energy. And then the money angels, my homeboys, was on the scene for me. I started doing things that sounds crazy and looks crazy to other people, especially. But I was bold. I didn't give a damn. So I learned to communicate with my angels. I learned to ask for what I required in order to do this work. And I always got. I started off fifty dollars, bam, got it. A hundred dollars, bam, got it. Two fifty, bam, got it. Five hundred, bam, got it. If you believe in it, you gotta test it out. If you believe in it, you gotta test it out. I have a video that I put up on YouTube years ago dealing with the money angels. And if you've seen that video, you know my story. You know my story. Everything I was asking for, I got. And I was still trying to doubt the universe. I was still looking for something that would allow me to fail, even though I had never failed. But there was something in my head trying to remind me to doubt the subconscious will to fail. And I had gotten everything I asked for. I was working all the rituals. Whatever the receipt was, $13, I would sign my name if I used the debit card, and I, I would write, will come back to me threefold. And it always did. So everything was working, but I was still dealing with this doubt factor. And so one day I said, you know, I said, I'm tired of this shit here, man. I'm just tired of doubting. Like, I really want to believe in it, but damn, if I believe in it and then really need it and it fails me, I'm going to be devastated. So I said, okay, this is what I got to do. All right, universe. I'm about to ask for a serious chunk of money that if it comes through, I'm, I'm game, I'm sold. And so my desire was for 5K. I said, there we go, universe. We're going to try this shit here. I need five goddamn K in order to do the work. Now, I never, you know, requested or you know, ask for money just on the strength, you know, or just about flat screen TV or some shit. No, it was always to do the work. I needed crystals and massage tables and herbs and to do the work. I made my needs, my wants, and I could flip that. Life got easier for me when I learned that. I said, all right, universe, here we go. I need 5K to do this work. And I was saying need back then, even though we say require or, you know, we say require, we got want, we got need. And these words do have frequency. But back then, I would need, look, I need, the universe, need 5K. I put it out there. My man Pete, who sings with Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Hired me to do some legal work for his daughters. The payment was $4,500. Pete was one of the individuals who truly paid me my worth when I was in sovereignty doing law, statutory law. Even though I was in sovereignty, I was still doing the statutory law, tight in the statutory law. 
So Pete sent me a check for forty five hundred dollars. I spoke to Pete that Sunday. The check was in the mail mailbox that Friday because back then I was just going to the mailbox to get paid. People were sending me checks, money orders for the herbs. So I was just going to the to the mailbox. That's where my money was. That Thursday I sold six detoxes. And I had six hundred dollars that Thursday. I was about to go to Venice Beach that Friday and I said, Oh, I didn't check the mailbox. Check the mailbox, it was Pete's check. Forty five hundred dollars. I went and got back in this rental car I was in, and as I was taking off, it hit me. I froze up, and I had chills all over my body. I said, oh, shit. All right, folks, we're probably going to be dealing with these type of technical issues throughout the show. Again, I am dealing with some faulty devices from Charter Communications. I'm not trying to disparage Charter. It is what it is. So, again, please bear with me. And I think that is my cue to, to take a few calls. The number to call in with a question or comment is 714-364-4358. And I am not done. I have more to share. Call the number again at 714-364-4358. Okay, we're going to take this first call. I believe it is from Dallas, 214. Caller from the 214, are you with us? 214. Okay, let's jump to the next caller, and you know, it very well may be my connection here. Let's try a caller from the 714 area code. That is Orange County. Caller from the 714, are you with us? Yes. Greetings to Hootie. This is Lisa from San Diego. How are you doing? San Diego. Okay, 714. I'm good. I'm I'm hyped, but I'm I'm good. How are you doing, beloved? I'm doing fine. So glad that, um, you know, the show was is on tonight. I was trying to listen last night, so sorry you're going through all these technical difficulties, but so glad that you're here to uh Oh yeah, we're gonna get it worked topic. out. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get it worked out. Sal is busy doing some stuff and, and Sal is out here to actually handle um, you know, the technical aspect. But you know, that that brother, you know, he is swamp going hard. But uh yeah, we'll we'll get it straight, you know. We don't we don't let nothing stop us. You know, if the show don't go it's just meant for that night to, to not pop, you know, but Tonight it was meant to pop, and we're talking about the metaphysics of money. Do you have a question or comment, beloved? Well, a question most definite. I, too, like you, um, grew up seeing these, um, I guess I would have to say, misappropriation of funds. So I'm still <laughs> trying to, yes, really, definitely. Yeah. And it, it follows up with last week's show, okay, the generational curse, of a poverty mentality. And yes. what I saw growing up uh, was a paternal, maternal father, my grandfather. Uh, to who I would liken him to a black Don Corleone. As a little hmm. girl, I would see this man, uh, you know, my grandfather, sitting at the head of the table. People uh-huh. in the family that needed money, they would come to the house. He would sit down with them. They would explain their financial uh, need, and he would say, okay, now I'm going to loan you this money, but when you pay me back, you're going to have to pay me back the money plus interest. Mm. And people in the, he, he, the man always had money. And I remember mm. uh, when it was time to take care of the household, he would give my grandmother money to do what she needed, you know, grocery shopping, take care of the needs for the house, whatnot. But he would always tell her, you need to sit down and go over with me what it is that I do to, you know, run this household because one day I'm not going to be here. Hmm. She would always tell him, I'm not worried about it because I know I'm going to go before you do. Well, the man went before she did. She never Hmm. learned how to drive. 
you know, I saw her. We would go to the store. She would always pull out the credit card, get you something. <laughs> you see, and nobody really sat down, you know. She was hung up on panties. Yeah. I don't know what that was about. She yeah. was baby, get you some panties. Get you some bra all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And then this translated into my mother, okay. When mm-hmm. my grandfather was alive, she didn't uh, manage money correctly, you know, married to my father. She wanted to have certain things done. He would say, we're not going to do that right now. So who he, mm. she would go behind my father's back, call my grandfather, mm. and grandfather would give her. You don't do that in a marriage. You you married now. This is your husband. Hey, but a lot of people do, and you sing into the choir. Yeah, and you, and, you know, growing up, no. had, and then looking at how dad, dad is tight, and this is a, mm-hmm. another question. The rever- it's a reverse situation with poverty mentality where he holds on to money so much that he will not do for himself. Right, house, right. Right now, house, house is paid for, okay? But the hoodie, the house got mold. Floors need mm. to be done. Roof need to be done. It's just like daddy. You, you came up straight from the cotton fields, man. You work hard. You can't live like this, but to who needs something that he wants to do, it gets done. Oh, so he's, up, he's, up in age. he's up in age and everything now. See, you know, he in this situation with mom didn't work, uh, did not uh, work out. This is another thing. Married but separated, okay? Right. What are you going to do? You out here dating these other women, but, but see, you still tied to this woman here. Right, right. Divorce. Or, or, or move on. But see, he didn't want a divorce because it cost right. money. He figured, okay, you know, she out here doing the thing with the drugs and alcohol. I think in his mind, Tahuti figured she's going to die. I don't have to worry about getting divorced. Tahuti, he almost damn died. I'm there at the hospital. People asking me, does he have a, a DNR? You know, uh, I guess director of uh, whatever they call it. Do you, do you want... Does he want to be resuscitated or does he want to go on if this does not work out? I'm not knowing. I'm telling a man, if something happened to you, what are me and my siblings supposed to do? We don't know where nothing is at. We don't know what your wishes are. You know we don't have money. What do you want us to do? You see, these types of things can, can go on in our community particularly, and it don't make no sense for our loved ones to leave here. we got to have fish fries. Car washes trying to bury these people. We got siblings that we don't know about showing up at the funeral. It's just crazy, mm. you know. Well, let me we, ask you, this, we, sister. What have you, what have you learned from that experience? Uh, it's all about taking care of business, taking care of your financial business when you're here. Get some type of insurance upon yourself, you know. It's, Try to, if you're not, if when you when you pass here, have your your thing set in order so people will know what your wishes are. You got your burial uh, plot taken care of. You don't want a big funeral service. I saw your video on funerals again. Thank you for that. You want to be cremated, whatever. You don't want, you know, it, like you said in the video, the people gone. What they gonna do with a sixty thousand dollar casket? You spending. It's all a racket. It's all a hustle. These funeral homes that that that, that they you know do uh, you know on people, three hundred fifty dollars worth of flowers. Person is gone. Like you said, the funerals are for the living. So if you caught up in the emotion and you're not paying attention to these things, like you discussed, you're not going to know what to do. And nobody prepares you. Just like you said, nobody sits down. And how is it you know that we get to this point where? These children that are being born now, their credit is already messed up. The parents is putting cable in their name, <laughs> telephone in their yeah. name, furniture yeah. from rent center This is all the stuff that I've seen to Hootie. It don't make no sense. When our four parents had so much less than what we do now and were able to do so much more, when you know, it, sometimes when it came to finances, they knew how to save. But like you said, us, it's, 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 pro, it's programming. It's, it's, it's programming. And me. then also, too, you can't do nothing about nobody else but yourself. 
ourselves. Exactly. As much as we love our people, all we can do is lead by example. I mean, just keeping it real. You know, generally speaking, we are a consumerist people. Hell, I used to be a consumer. So I know what oh, it's I like to consume. You dig? You, but I also you, you know what it's like to press worry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I also know what it's like, man, to be straight, man, and to be creative. You know, Citrine taught me that creativity is the precursor for abundance, you see. And, man, when you operate from the creativity, upper and lower, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And so see, it doesn't have to I'm, I'm see. To it doesn't have to see how it is for the majority of people, okay? And so, you know, you got the money coming in, but what are you doing with that money? Exactly. See, what are you doing with that? I invest in DVDs. I invest in books. I invest in crystals. I invest in the tools that give back to me, you see. Exactly. Unlike my pops buying the jewelry, the cheap jewelry, I invest in precious metals, gold, and silver. I invest in life insurance, but not just term. I have term and whole. Right. Interest-bearing life insurance, you know, so I can use the life insurance while I'm alive. Like Mr. Walt exactly. Disney, we would not have a Disneyland if it was not for whole or permanent life insurance that allows has value to accumulate while we are alive. I don't use no goddamn 401k. I use life insurance that I can borrow against any time I want to, and I don't have to pay no taxes. You see, so it's one thing to have the money coming through, but it's another thing to have the knowledge for what to do with the money that is coming through. You exactly. see, it's coming through. What are you doing with it? You got to invest. You got to invest. And you know, and I like I said, really my grandmother was a Christian, but she didn't understand that story. The parable of the talents. Remember, the traveling salesman came and and gave talents to the servants. One got five, I believe one got four or three, and then one was given one. And the one who was given the least talent out of fear, that sap sucker went and buried it out of fear. Scripture says he buried it out of fear. Okay, uh, dear sister, I apologize about that. But like I have said previously in this broadcast, I am experiencing technical difficulty. I got some new devices hooked up here from Charter Cable, and uh, something's going on with it. So um, I don't know if it's dropping every 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes or what, but it's probably going to do that throughout the show. But nevertheless, I am back. Are you still with us, uh, dear sister? I'm still here, and I, I just thank you because I really, really, you know, and this is, a, like you said, this when you first brought up this topic, I saw your post on Twitter, can go in so many directions because I really look at our young people, and, you know, I've got relatives that, and they're young and trying to talk to them, and they, they get so seduced in wanting these material things. Now, you know, I'm here, and I've got young uh female cousins selling themselves into prostitution, mm. mm-hmm. it, you know, mm-hmm. and how can we protect our young people from being preyed upon by these older people, you know, kind of trying to get them to do things for, for, you know, money in exchange for sex. And even the young boys now I'm hearing, you know, middle-aged women preying on the young boys now. You know, it's just crazy. It's just like, what? So that, you know, see, how so can we protect ain't... these kids? Hey, look, for a lot of them, it's meant for them to get certain, you know, life lessons. You know, there are certain people, uh, including children, that will listen and others will not. You know, I can go back uh, to my childhood, and I was one who always listened. You know, the old folks would say, Duna, boy, see, see Duna, he listened. But these other ones, see, they don't listen. You see, and watch how they're going to turn out. And that was real talk because I got cousins right. out there hooking horn. I, I got male cousins hustling, what have you, in jail, just just tore from the flow up, you know. 
So certain people, no matter what you say to them, they're going to just do them. And right. they're, they're moving. They're operating, you know, according to a code by default. And even though that code is by default, they're going to get lessons. You have to create your own code to live by it, you know. Now, when you start off, you know, people will laugh at you. They'll say you're strange, what have you. But, see, the race don't go to the swift. It goes to those who can endure to the end. Now, you heard me say in a previous show, I don't deal with nobody in my family. You see, so when I blew it with D Herbs and blew it with DHealthStore.com, I was all on the radio, and you know, they would see me in magazines, you know, the Herbalist of the Celebs. My family who called me crazy, see, Dola Boy is crazy. He, he, he is something wrong with him. But when I start working his money magic, my entire family, <laughs> maternal and paternal, we're trying to get at me. Still trying to get at me. I'm not so crazy sounding these days. You right. See? I'm not so crazy sounding these days because I'm doing things they desire to do. And I don't have to sell myself. I didn't go to college. I don't have a degree. I don't work two, three, four something jobs. You know, I don't hook wholesale dope. I don't do stuff like that. I do me. And that's a good damn feeling, you know, when you're balling on your own accord, following your heart. Matthew six thirty three, seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all this bullshit, the material stuff of the matrix shall be added unto you. Is that is that simple? And that's how I live. And are these people following their hearts? Hell no. They work in jobs out of fear, operating from the imbalance first chakra. You see, that's why your family members and my family members, the females, the males too, but mostly the females, are selling themselves. First chakra imbalance. They're not grounded. They're not rooted in Gai. They don't know that their needs are already provided for if they would just become unconscious and realize that. But they don't know. And the demon of the first chakra is fear. And so when you're fearful that you can't make it on your own, that's when you start prostituting yourself. You got a lot of women having sex out of fear with no good dudes and giving them all the buck wild crazy sex whenever the dude wants. Why? Because they're dependent upon that dude. And it ain't love, it's fear. Why? Because this dude pays the rent. He pay my car note. He take care of my child and my children. He put food on the table. He pay for my hair. He pay for my fingernails. Ain't no love. It's fear. So she operates on fear, the demon of the first chakra, located at the vagina. So she uses her vagina for survival purposes. And that's what the first chakra deals with. It deals with survival. It deals with our root, being grounded. And when you're not grounded then you end up prostituting yourself. And the same thing goes for males. Same thing goes for them, too. You got dudes in relationship with females that they don't find attractive, don't, don't like, don't love. But she takes care of them. It goes both ways, but it's an imbalanced first chakra, you see. And you cannot come into money consciousness without being knowledgeable about the chakras and their metaphysical attributes and when you deal with money consciousness wealth consciousness that's the second chakra that's the second chakra it's deep it's a lot that we have to learn astrology mm -hmm. you know numerology the chakras you know the crystals is so much that we have to learn beloved I'll tell you keep learning and create your own code I'm going to take this next call it beloved I'm seeing the pattern you're you. calling in. It's great. It's great hearing hearing from you, beloved. And you're doing a great job. I know you are. I will not say your name. I will just say that you are my sister. Thank you so much, and you are my brother. And I really appreciate all that you've done. I I watched the videos, and you know I'm gonna listen to the show t tonight and, and learn. And just like you said, I, I keep doing me because, like you said, at the end of the day. You can tell people, but they're going to do what they got. Free will, just like you said, free will. Do you, sir. Just stay in your lane and, you. and just do you. Do you, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. you got it. Bye-bye.
Okay. This connection is very slow. Caller from 605, are you with us? Caller, area code 605, are you with us? Okay, yeah, this connection is slow. It is slow. So you guys bear with me tonight. This phone is hanging up like every 15, 20 minutes. We got some uh, new technological gadgets installed today that is not working right. Let's see here. Let's take this next call, see if this works. Caller, are you with us? Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. State your name and where you're calling from, please. My name is Tracy, calling from Arkansas. Tracy, calling from Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Question or comment, beloved? Yeah, uh, this is my first time listening to your show, and I really wanted to know how often do you come on the time and the days so I can listen to your, uh, your other shows as well. It was very interesting. Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Starting Sunday, I'm going to um, be online Sunday through Thursday, 6 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, Just keeping it real, it's three hours, uh, but sometimes um, conversations uh, can end up being long-winded. So we're going to do our best to keep the show to two and a half hours. And if it should go overboard, we will be within our three-hour time limitation. So Sunday through Thursday, 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 6 p.m. Pacific Standard or 9 o'clock p.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time. How would you find out about the show, sir? Well, I saw a tweet on my Twitter message. You know, I had been following you for a while, and I saw the tweet on there today. I'm actually on Central Time, so. Oh, okay. The time okay. The time Six o'clock p.m. Is, uh, is that yeah? That's a two two hour time difference. Eight o'clock p.m. CST, uh, Sunday through Thursday. Okay. Okay. I and if you have any down. suggestions for, for for topics, you can always uh, hit me up on Twitter. And you can also send them to customer service at tootiemyrawherbs dot com for a subject matter. If you can see my library right now, I got books all on the floor, man. I mean, it's so much to talk about. We will never ever run out of subjects. And when I get this internet uh, working right, so this phone is not hanging up on me every fifteen to twenty minutes. You know, we can keep it flowing nonstop. But, man, it's a lot of good stuff uh, to talk about. I've been off the scene for for two years, and there's a lot, Mm -hmm. you know, going on, you know. And I have, you know, my unique insight, you know. It's not the only insight. My answers are not the only answers or my solutions are not the only solutions. But, nevertheless, they are solutions, uh, and there are other people out there, you know, who have answers, who have solutions, who have insights. You put it all together, man, you know, and you make a bowl of soup that works for you. Like I was telling the last caller, it's not about everybody else. You know, you cannot dictate and control and force other people to do things. You can only do it for yourself. And when I learned that lesson, man, I'm telling you, man, I really ascended in this thing called peace, man. I'm right back where I was 10 years ago with a peace out of this world and I'll never give it up again (laughs) Tracy I want to thank you for calling in check us out Sunday through Thursday and that starts uh, this Sunday this Sunday 6 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time we're going to be continuing with relationship issues and challenges here in the matrix you have a beautiful rest of the evening beloved and be safe out there because it is a so-called new year in the matrix and people act a fool out there thank you tracy all right you do the same you got it Bye-bye. okay let's go to the next call here 972 is, is that new jersey 972 Hey, what's going on? Caller from the 92. Are you with us? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. State your name and where you're calling from, beloved. Uh, Dante down in Dallas. Oh, 972 is Dallas. Okay, 214 and 972. I'm learning a lot about area codes. Dante, Dante, Dante. How you doing, beloved? I'm doing well. I just wanted to say thank you for doing this. Uh, I've called a lot of your past shows from the past few years, so... 
want to thank you for doing this. Very, very glad that you're back on. Oh, thank you, uh, good brother. It feels good to be back, man. I've been out of the mix, man, for a minute, man. So, you know, it does uh, feel good being back. You got a question or a comment for us this evening? Uh, yeah, I got a comment that's going to end up leading to a question, man. Okay. So this finance, this finance thing, I've been on tour for quite a while. Uh, my family, as you would say, very much into the matrix and the consumerism. Um, yeah. Even as a kid, I, I never really felt the consumerism. I was always kind of the hustler type. I would cut everybody's grass, shovel snow, anything I could do, and I would save my money because I, I always saw the problems that the consumerism would bring. Hmm. So, so years coming down the line, I'm, uh, I've always had good grades in school, and you know, did what I was told, and studied finance, and uh, graduated college, and <clears throat> was off to a good career, man, good career. Uh, was making good money, and, and I just started doing the mathematics to Hootie, and it just didn't add up to me, man. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to spend all these years working in in the career. You know, the mo- the top that I'm going to make, I may make a few six figures going on, but at the end of the day, that's not going to give me freedom. If I got two weeks two right. weeks off during the year, what, what, what kind of freedom is that if I'm tied to a 60-hour-a-week job? That's right. That's so, right. A lot uh, of people don't realize it, beloved. You know, most people putting in 9, 10, 11 hours just to get paid for eight hours. You know, it's the 40, 40, 40. You know, 40 hours you know, a week for 40 years to only end up with 40% of that. It's the rat race. Exactly. It's the rat race, uh, beloved. And I'm telling you, man, if people do not get with that entrepreneurial spirit, I mean, they're really going to feel it. Now, I know Donald Trump is catching a lot of hell out there for acting crazy and making racist statements, but Donald Trump did say something very, um, he said something very profound many years ago that I give him credit for in this linear aspect that is, and he said that you have a choice. You could be rich or poor. And this is in a book called uh, Why We Want You to Be Rich. I doubted that book at first, you know, but I read it, and uh, Donald Trump and Robert T. Kiyosaki really gave up some good information. And to this day, I'm very thankful to Trump in that linear respect for what he gave up pertaining to finances. America is changing, man. America is squeezing out that middle class and it's boiling down to rich and poor. And you got to choose which side you're going to be on. And if you don't choose, by default, somebody's going to choose for you, you will be on the poor side because poor people stay poor because rich people stay rich. And that's why J.R. Ewing said, he said, I like being rich. He said, because when the rich get richer, he said, he said the poor get poor and the rich get richer. And he just smiled, and Dallas went off with that theme song. And that's this very day, good brother. So you on to something, good brother. You are on to but something. I'm, but I'm on to this point here, Tahuti. I, I did uh, go into the entrepreneurship. I quit it okay. all, gave it all up. Everybody told me I was stupid, I was dumb, you know. Hmm. And I gave it up, started a, business, started a business, and the business went really well for the first six months. However, okay. I, was getting, I was selling products, and I learned Internet marketing, and I, and I got good at all that, copywriting and all that I, I studied. I didn't go out. I don't. I don't party anymore. I'm, I'm about this business right now. However, uh, my manufacturer fell through, and I had a Chinese manufacturer, and it just it messed up my whole thing, Tahuti. Wow. So, so now I'm at the point where I, I uh, I've started a couple of other businesses, a couple of hustles that I'm doing right now. Um, but I just can't get back to the money that I was making before. How can I get back to what I was doing before, man? It, I'm not used to this, Tahuti. Well, well, now, what happened? What what, what was the blockage? You said the, uh, the manufacturer? Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I, I started a business, and uh, I was in the baby field, so I was selling a lot of product, baby products. But okay. The mistake that I could make is I had one manufacturer. Um. <clears throat> And they made a few mistakes on my orders, and then mm. after a while, they kind of just fell off. They disappeared. I couldn't get in contact with them more, so I was stuck. Once I sold my last batch of my products, I couldn't get any more, <clears throat> and I really couldn't. And it was a specialized product that I specifically created, uh, so it was really hard to get that duplicated with other manufacturers, and they couldn't get it right to 
what I wanted and what my customers uh, uh, depended on. So I, I really did have to move on. I could have stuck with it, but I feel like it was going to be kind of a money pit at that point. Um, so so I moved on and I started other businesses that had just haven't reached that level of success yet. Um, you got to so go back to what's working, beloved. You You got to go back to what's working. You know, you may pay more, but you know what? You can make that back. And something I learned from corporations, man, man, that buck is always passed off to the consumer. If they want it, they pay for it. They pay for it. I say okay. go back okay. and do that, which works for you, beloved. It may be rough, you know, looking for manufacturers who can hook you up like the last manufacturer did, but you know what? It will be well worth it. You know, you obviously don't like where you're at right now, okay? You obviously don't like it. I wouldn't like it either. So you got to say to yourself, like, man, this is different. It didn't used to be like that. Well, how come it wasn't like that? Well, because, you know, I was selling certain things. It, you know, came from a manufacturer that's no longer on the scene. Hey, listen, I got to really put in some time, you know, to and, and, and I have to invest this time to look for another manufacturer. It would be great if I can get the, the same deal, the old deal, but if not, then you know what? I just got to take what comes my way. In worst case scenario, beloved, you can bump up the price just a little, just a little, you know, so you can break yourself off, right? Because the 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 businessman or the entrepreneur or the business, if you will, passes off to the consumer. The consumer has to take care of the business because the business, the entrepreneur, has the responsibility, has the expenses. Hello? Okay, I am back, good people. I am back. I called in from my cell phone, and let's see if that will uh, make a difference. Uh, Dante, are you still with us, beloved? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, good, brother. Hey, my advice, man, go back to that which works, man. You know, go ahead and invest them ducats, man. I know how it is when you lose a, a good manufacturer, you know, but if you got a great uh, product, man, you want to stick with that. And it's really a simple uh, solution. Very simple All right, solution. I, I really do appreciate the time. You got it, good brother. You got it. Hey, man, enjoy the rest of your evening and be safe out there. Peace and love. All right, we're going to go to the next caller from the, what is this area code here? 318. 318. 318. Caller from the 318, are you with us? Hello? Okay. There we go. Yeah, I'm I'm, have, I'm experiencing some technical difficulty on this end over here. Uh, caller? Greetings. Uh, caller, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yes, it, I can hear you. Uh, yes, um, uh, the 318 is from Louisiana. Uh, 318 is Louisiana? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, All right. State your name for us. State your name for us, please. Yes, my name is Ivan. Uh, I'm I'm an African, and uh, I follow you on Twitter. And sometimes you you tweet me back, and that tweet you some great things. I was the one who said I couldn't see the um, the, uh, the the DVDs when you buy the when you buy the mm. 
the the movie. Okay. The, yeah. I got that, you. That, I got you. Yeah, that was very interesting. Uh, a very interesting movie with with uh, um with with great information. However, I have a question concerning today's topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Um, yeah. Uh, when people give information on how to invest, uh, the money game, right? Um, it, uh, they tell you don't give up. You know, they tell you you should invest. Job is not good. Uh, it's, it's better to be an entrepreneur and uh, and be an an investor, right? But when you look in some books, you don't find like a blueprint. Let's say you want to buy stocks. When I started, I didn't know where to go. I went to a financial advisor, and they told me I needed thirty thousand dollars to start investing. But that oh, was wow. a lot, that was a lot of money to start with when I was in college. And recently, I saw a a, a guy on YouTube uh, giving like details on how to invest. With him. He go he gave like a. A, like a blueprint on how to buy stocks, as in, but the basics. I didn't go deep into what the IRS gonna do, stuff like that. Um, do you think just focusing on on the on the on the spiritual will lead you to finding the blueprint on, on as in the the use like as in um, the exact the exact way to invest with all the laws like how to pay tax, all that that like specific information. I don't know if you if I'm explaining myself right. The spiritual will always help you. Will always mm-hmm. because see we're spiritual beings, so we see spiritually. We don't just see physically, we see spiritually. We don't just hear physically, we hear spiritually. So mm-hmm. all of our senses, uh the mundane of the material, the physical senses, they're also there on the spiritual. So the spiritual will always help us. Behind everything material, there is that invisible, okay, that energetic or spiritual component, if you will. So, yes, it will most definitely help you, just like it helped me. Now, Mm -hmm. you mentioned something about stocks. Yes, sir. And when when I hear the word stocks, a red flag comes up. Because mm-hmm. stocks are tied into Wall Street. Even Rockefeller himself said, stay away from Wall Street. It's too mm-hmm. risky. Now, most people who got the 411 on investing, they invest into that, which is a sure shot thing, man. And that is the whole life insurance, man. You'd be surprised how many millionaires and billionaires wisely invested into life insurance. You even got corporations investing into um, whole permanent life insurance policies for the cash value. Cash value. See, man, when you're dealing with Wall Street, man, you don't know when inflation is going to be 20, 30 years from now. This was like during the bubble in 2008, man. I got a video uh, produced by Frontline. And you see all of these little middle class corporate people in New York, man, just crying, man. They're in the unemployment office. I mean, they are crying. They're talking about how they lost their savings, how they lost their retirement. You have to ask yourself, like, how in the hell? Like, wait a minute. If you invest in a 401k, how can you lose it? Because it's tied into Wall Street. They're gambling with your money. And see, if anybody's going to gamble with my money, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. But when you know it's investing, you're not gambling. You're not gambling. You are taking intelligent steps to secure yourself by way of investing. So you have to know what to invest in. Again, the life insurance, the precious metals, the real estate. That's what a lot of people are missing. I ain't talking about the flipping of the, the property. You know, just limited to flipping property. But the real estate, man, 400% increase from the real estate market. The average American, 2% increase from income. But real estate, 400% increase. And this goes back to 2010. 
2010. It's about that portfolio. And 30000 30000 man, please. If you would have invested that 30000 into some life insurance, man, your cash value would be crazy. Tax-free, too, at that. Tax-free, too. Oh, man, I mean, they're swindling the American citizens. The 401K, most people don't even know the 401K is a, is a statutory code section. It's a statutory provision coming out of the Internal Revenue Code. The IRS will fuck you, man. The word tax, the root of the word tax is to stroke gently, but they're not stroking gently nowadays. They're stroking hard and with no Vaseline. Go look up the word tax. The etymology yes, of that word means to stroke gently. And Uncle Sam, and he's not, he's stroking, but he ain't stroking gently. And they got the American people 401k. As soon as you get a, a job, go to the plantation, they're going to offer you benefits, which is really detriment. What the hell is medical, dental, hearing, and vision? That's all allopathic. What, what if you're into naturopathy? You see, what if you're into naturopathy? If you use allopathic medicine, there's no damn benefit. That's a detriment. And then a whole one K, and I just explained what that is. That ain't no benefit. That's a detriment. And the government gonna penalize you forty plus percent when you pull it out? No, 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 no. There are things out there that you can pull out money, and there's no penalty. That's why I said earlier in the show: when you learn to borrow from yourself, you will never be denied a loan, sir. Learn to borrow from yourself. There's a concept: banking on yourself. That's the concept: banking on yourself. And it deals yes, with life insurance, the right life insurance. Oh, uh, um, when you ahead, say investing, yes, well, when you say investing in precious metal and and um and the uh, life insurance, you mean uh you mean uh getting a life insurance of your own, or yes, sir. And then yes, when sir. You, this is on uh-huh. you, you can also do it for your children. Hey, look, the more policy is the better. The more policy is the better. You see, so I have three policies for myself to a whole life, and then I got whole life policies on my children, and their policies are in my name. So all of these policies, they're generating cash value, cash value. So I have eight policies generating cash value. Man, you get the right policy set up, man, 30, 30 years, man, you could have half a million dollars unaffected by inflation, if you start right now and you get you a 30 year policy, man, and you, these things have to be configured the right way. They have to be created. They have to be structured the right way. And if you structure these bad boys the right way, beloved, and you make those premiums, you're going to be straight mm-hmm. in 30 years. I mean, in all due honesty, you'll be straight in two years, five years. You'll be straight, you know, depending on how much that premium is. And if you spend like a thousand dollars a month in two years, you're going to see about $10,000 in free money, tax free. You see, so you it all the depends money that- on the, What's that you mean like? when you say when you say free money, you mean the money they're gonna give you, or it's the money that's gonna? It's your money. No, 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 no. That's your money. See, imagine taking a thousand dollars, right? Imagine taking a thousand dollars, and six hundred goes on a premium, and four hundred goes into something like a savings account. So from every thousand yes, dollars that you're paying in a monthly premium, four hundred is set aside. If you get it set up the right way, you could have five hundred or six hundred of that set aside. Now, imagine that for 30 years, and that's guaranteed money, sir, unaffected by this thing called inflation. Only 500 million, I'm sorry, 500,000 Americans know about this too, sir, 500,000. That's why, see, I got to do a show on being an entrepreneur, because when you're an entrepreneur, and not just being an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. but an entrepreneur that is creative, you see, it's just like how I created my business. I just introduced the business manual, right, my oh. business course manual. And it's predicated yes, upon the information coming from myself. So it's not just about being an entrepreneur, but I'm talking about being one who is creative, being one who is spiritual, a spiritualpreneur, okay, being one who is legally astute, okay, business astute, financially astute. The Internal Revenue Service says if it is in your policy, it is legal. As long as it doesn't violate federal, state, local law, you're good to go. So you can create whatever you want in your policy, man. Listen here, that's why rich people, man, have corporations. You do not get rich in America, legally speaking, without a corporation. And that's why you have a concept called incorporate and get rich or grow rich. 
incorporate so you can protect those assets mm-hmm. and you can use those benefits. The government care more about corporations than they do people. The government cares about corporations more than they do people. Corporations pay less tax than individuals. Earned income is the highest tax bracket, earned income. Most Americans are doing what? Earning income. And income itself is a fraud. I can do a whole show on that. Income is gained separate from capital. That's profit. You work a damn job, you don't get paid profit. You get paid on uh, salary, wages, compensation. That's what you get paid, not no damn profit. Income is a false term. But that's a whole nother show there. The American people are being gaffled. Uh, again, they're being not gently stroked, but, but, but painfully stroked with no Vaseline. You see, so yes. when you set up your own corporation, then you start living. And that's how I've been living. Oh. That's the only way I'm going to live, through a corporation. And I'm going to give myself all type of benefits. This is in my business manual. It's in my business. This little manual is $300-something, and you're going to learn stuff that you do not learn in business school. Man, I live through my corporation. I give myself benefits, man. I got a laundry benefit. Um, I have a, um, a, a rent or mortgage benefit with a corporation. Will will pay rent or mortgage. It'll pay for the car. It'll pay for gas, uh, groceries. Everything that I was doing before I was in business, I learned to incorporate and make the corporation pay for it, and let it become an expense. You see, and I make myself an employee of that corporation, and then I can balance things out. And that's what I've been doing for the past several years, living the life, living the life, man. You know, the IRS said if you're a writer, you can go to New York or Chicago, wherever you want to. And that whole trip, you get to write that whole trip off if that trip is for literature. So if I was writing a book on Sedona, Arizona, I can go to Sedona, Arizona and the airfare, the hotel, the transportation, the food. It's all a write-off. It's all an expense. But I got to come back with the e-book. I got to come back with the physical book or the e-book on Sedona, Arizona. So if I want to go to Chicago, I write a book on Chicago. That whole trip, everything I do in Chicago to write that book becomes an expense for my corporation or LLC, whatever it is that you choose. And let me tell you something, man. A lot of people, poor people, quote-unquote little people, man, they don't understand the IRS. There's a movie called The Firm with Tom Cruise and Gene Hackman. There's a lot of knowledge dropped. There's a lot of knowledge dropped in that movie, man, about the legal loopholes, man. And I know a lot of people hear IRS and they get scared, but that IRS code, most Americans don't even own an internal revenue code, and they pay taxes. They pay taxes. They don't have an internal revenue code. They don't have a constitution, federal or state. They have a driver's license, but they don't own the vehicle code. Man, I could say so much, beloved, but I'm going to end there. you have anything to, to follow up on what I just said, beloved, so I can get to the next caller? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have uh, do you have already the manual ready to be uh, on on the website, or is it going to come up later this uh, 2016? Oh, check it, check it, check it out. Check out tootiemaraherbs dot com and tootiemaraher dot com tomorrow. It, it, you know, we're still in December. We're still in in 2015, December 31st. So if you mm-hmm. follow my tweets on Twitter, it says January 2016, which is tomorrow. Oh, and so that's when it's going to drop. It'll be available tomorrow. Oh, okay. Tomorrow is January 1st. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Thank yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, man. So, you know what? You got the right mindset, beloved. You know, you just you just need to learn what to invest in, man. The gold, the silver, uh, the palladium. A lot of people are sleeping on the uh, the palladium. And they're also the sleep, sleeping on the platinum. Yeah. Yes, oh. sir. Yes, sir. Yes. See, you want to invest so in those precious thing, metals, huh? man. Uh, what, what you want to you want to uh-huh. How you go? Oh, go how, how you go? About, how you go about with investing in in, in precious metal? How, you, oh, it's easy. You, all you do, do is find. All you do is find. All you do is find you a broker, and okay. find out what it is you want to invest in. Okay, whether it's gold, silver, <laughs> palladium, uh, platinum, whatever metals, uh, you know that mm-hmm. that they're offering, and set up you an oh. account. And every every mm-hmm. month, you know, you buy a certain amount, okay? And the longer you hold on to it, the better it is. In order to, you know, to, to, to break even and then also to get a benefit, you have to hold on them. So we're, we're talking like a good 10 years. Uh, with the life insurance, you know, we're talking a 30-year uh, policy because, you know, you know, the name of the game, you know, is, is the end of 
you know, the race, you know, uh, for most people that's a rat race. So we're talking about like the retirement or uh, retirement years, but uh, you can do it in five years, 10 years. It just depends on what you're putting in, how much you are investing. Okay. Most Americans, man, unfortunately, you know, they're not putting anything aside for retirement. They're trusting uh, the social security administration. Okay. Which is a fraud, which is a Ponzi scheme. You see, that's why you have a lot of people beyond the age of 65 still working the corporate jobs, man. America will get you messed up, man. Do you, do you know, man, even people like Susie Orman, man, that they're giving out erroneous information. They're giving out uh, one type of information for the masses, and then there's another type for themselves that they keep for themselves, man. you got to look wow. out for this conventional financial wisdom. Or, yes. You, all these people on CNN and, and headline news, look out for them. Look out for them. And then you get my business manual, man. I have a lot of great resources in there. And then also, too, once I get this library set up, you're going to have a lot of book references. These will be like little e-articles, and they'll sell for $1 to $2.50, man. And they're going to be the, the names and the authors and the publishing companies in the year that these books came out and all the books you need for, uh, for life insurance and how to use a life insurance policy for a retirement. That's what the rich boys are doing, man. They're using life insurance, man, instead of um, – uh, 401k is called this, uh, the uh, Section 162 Executive Bonus, uh-huh. and that's what they're doing, you see. But they're not giving that to the masses mm-hmm. of the people. See, that's why I set up my own corporation so I could do this for myself, you know, and my quote-unquote employees, you see. So you want to be, uh, be an entrepreneur, but you want to be one mm-hmm. that set up his or her own business, and that's what I teach mm-hmm. you how to set up your own business. Not just being an entrepreneur. We have a whole bunch of entrepreneurs out there, but they're really – they're not balling, and they're really not using their business to their advantage. And for a lot of people, man, it's a detriment, you know, because they got the tax mm-hmm. issues, you know, they're dealing, you know, with the state tax board, they're dealing with the, the federal tax board, they're dealing with the sales um, taxes, you know, they're dealing with all the permits, you know. Uh, if you're out here, you got uh, the city of Los Angeles, you got to deal with the city of Los Angeles, which is straight freaking draconian, man. I mean, California is I, – I got to applaud New York because New York just came out with an incentive uh, for their citizens to go in business in the state of New York. But in California, it is stone-cold, straight-up draconian, man. But you get the business, man. You, man, I deal with all these tax haven states, man, that you really want to, you know, stay away from because they don't really work for you because the states, man, are all about that money. So all that state nexus stuff, man, is in effect, man. So, you know, the only thing you're doing is really creating headaches for yourself because, you know, you got a Nevada corporation, but now you got to get your mail sent to California, New York, wherever you're at. Man, I cover all of that stuff in there, man, you know. I yes, mean, sir, I, I don't really care you know, where you are. You, if you can read, man, if you if you can read, man, you got the <laughs> willpower, man, and you, know, you got a little money to invest, man, you're going to be straight, man. You follow the information in this business manual, man. Guaranteed, yes, guaranteed. Yes, all right. Yes, good, brother. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, Reed, brother. Hey, go to the site, man, Tuti Matra. Actually, it's going to be com because starting tomorrow I'm breaking the site down. One is for products and the other one is for information. So the uh, correct site is com. com. No herbs, just com, mm-hmm. And you guys can also yeah. call the Crenshaw store. Thank you, good brother. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, mm-hmm. Thank you. Good Thank luck you. to you, brother. Thank yes, you, sir, you too, Reed. sir. Uh, yes, sir. My pleasure. Okay, let's go to the next uh, caller here. How we doing? We doing good with the time. 804, I want to say that's Utah. My computer's a little slow. Caller from 804, are you with us? Yeah, I'm right here. No, that's Virginia. Yeah. 804 is Virginia? Yeah, it's Richmond. Yeah, yeah, it's Richmond, Virginia. All right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, state your name and what part of Virginia you calling from, please. Um, oh, yeah, I'm calling, I'm calling from Richmond. Yeah, Richmond, Virginia. Y'all see, y'all oh, see that store set up in the Seven City? What's that, sir? What's that? Yeah, you, you y'all still got the store set up in uh, in Norfolk? No, no, you're talking about uh, Newport News, Newport News, man. We haven't had that. Uh, it's been more than two years now. It's oh. been more than two years. I could, yeah, I could do a whole show on that, and that's dealing with this whole uh, money consciousness, uh, but in particular, poverty consciousness. But, no, that's been uh, uh, two years, beloved. That was not myself. That was not com. That was an individual that really needs to be listening to this show so uh, that she can uh, learn a thing or two um, about money. And even though the show is not about business, but when you're dealing with business, you're dealing uh, with money. But uh, that's what happened to the story in uh, Newport News outside of uh, Norfolk. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, you know what, man? Um, I, I've been – 
I've bought your uh, your, your blood cleanse twice. I, I've bought I've bought like a, a a lot of stuff off your um, off your website. So I've been following your work and uh, and I was and I was subscribed to you on YouTube. And I and and I, and I think that right now, you know, at, at this point in my life, I'm 35 years old. You know what I mean? And it's not a I, I don't think that it's a coincidence that I'm on the phone talking to you right now. I really I really mm. don't think so because I I just started following you yesterday on Twitter because I I didn't know you even was on Twitter that you had a strong presence mm. on Twitter. You know? It's getting there, man. It's getting there. Yeah. And you know, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm talking. You know, like I have a, like I have a, I, I've developed a whole new vision, you know, for myself because, like I said, I'm 35, and you know, it's time, right. you know, it's time for, it, you know, it's it's been time for a change, and I'm, and, and I've been, and I've been plotting some things. Like I worked, uh, I work in a warehouse, but you know, I've been wanting to get my, uh, my commercial driver's license and hopefully own a couple of trucks and employ a few people and. Get into real estate myself. So, but you know me right now, I'm starting from ground zero, and I don't have much capital to work with. You know, but hey, and the um, capital. What you say now? The greatest capital is creativity. Hey, when I started, yeah. man, man, I, I really didn't have any money. I did not have any tangible money, man, but I had real money, the ultimate money, which was consciousness, man. Okay. That's what I had. Okay. That's the ultimate, you see. And so I started from ground zero. And then, you know, you start, you know, you know, putting putting some numbers behind those zeros. You know, yeah. it's magic, man. It's, it's, it's magic. Yeah. You know, so you, yeah. you can't let paper stop you, man. You know, you got to work the, the universal laws. You see, you but know, because you, 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 the mind is a magnet. You can you can attract, you know, the money, man. You get your mind straight, the money will come. As a matter as a matter think, of fact, everything will come. That's how powerful the mind is. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that's, I really that's, do. That's, that's, that's what I think I really my mind's mind, yeah. messed up. Our minds are messed up, you know. Look, look what goes into the mind, man. Crazy stuff, man. All type of crazy stuff on social media, man. We eating crazy. We're messing up the mind, man. That is the last. Uh, a space, a domain, man, to be conquered. People say, well, Tudy, they want our guns. They they want the money. They don't want anything they make. They want what they don't make, and that is human beings in general, the mind in particular. It is a battle. It is a war for your mind because that's where the okay. magic occurs, the mind. Go ahead, okay. good brother. Yeah, I mean, because... Yeah, now that you said creativity, like, like I, I'm, I'm, you know, I work at um, Amazon fulfillment, and you know, okay. we got through you know, the holidays and stuff like that, and I was like, well, hold on, I got they, they have what you call a buyout program where if you feel like you know this is not for you and stuff like that, they'll give you two thousand dollars severance pay to leave, and I'm like, well, <laughs> hold on, this, like, like this could be you know what I what I what I need to really pursue getting my CDL so I can go head on, learn the business, make some money and provide for my family while learning the business at the same time so I can go and make those moves, you know? Yes, sir. Really? I, you know, yeah, it, it's just like it's just like what you said, you know, earlier when you was talking to the first caller, you know, it it's fear, you know, and I and I and and I understand and and when I when you said that, it kind of it, t- it it took me back to you know my like I said my current job situation as far as you know you come in as long as you got the time you can go and come as you please and stuff like that and it's so easy to get a job there you know that a person can become complacent of course of course where but no knowing the job doesn't pay knowing the job doesn't pay a whole lot but the job is so easy to get and the job is so easy to maintain that it kind of makes somebody scared to go somewhere. And I thought to myself, I said, now, if I don't do something, I'm going to be right here next year. And I'm already, you know, and I already filed bankruptcy. You know what I mean? I already, you know, I, man, I, I'm married, you know, and I lost apartments. I lost cars because of, you know, poor money management. First of all, you know, 
I mean, mis- mismanaging my money on top of not making as much as I feel like I'm worth because I was, right. I was always told, you know, I was always told from the neck down you're worth $8 an hour, but from the neck up, you know, you're invaluable, you know. So right. I, I, I believe that, you know, like I believe that, you know, even though I've been put this plan in motion, I believe that if I don't start now, then, you know, then I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doomed. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be doomed to myself, a prisoner, a prisoner of my own fear. You know, and and that and that's just something I can't. And that's just something I can't. You know, I can't stomach that. I'd rather choke on success than nibble on mediocrity. All day you long. Know? Let me ask you this question, beloved. Let me ask you this question. Have you have you wrote your business plan? Uh. I, I I haven't wrote. I've been thinking it through. I haven't wrote it down yet. You have an assignment, sir. You have an assignment. You have the idea. Okay. Translate that into a business plan. See, that's working your magic. That's okay. working your magic. What's the name of your business? Um, Carney Trucking LL. You have a home Carney, tr- uh, Carney Transportation. That's that, that's that's right. what I want. Yeah. Car and truck and transportation. Okay, then you got to start seeing that. You got to start seeing that in your mind. You got to start visualizing yourself driving your company own van. You have to visualize yourself passing out the business cards. The mind, visualization, imagination. You see. And you can do that at any time you dictate or determine or choose. It's a very, 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 very powerful thing because truly the universe and the subconscious mind, as above, so below, and vice versa, it doesn't know the difference between an actual thing or a contrived thing. And that's very powerful. That Mm. means that you get to work it to your advantage that's how I got to where I am, man. I used to walk to work every day, and I used to visualize my formulas in my head. It was a ritual. Four formulas. Okay. Ten hertz each every day. And it manifested, man. It manifested. My okay. own business, facility, all of that, it started in my mind. And nobody had to teach me. It was just something I always did. But the longer I did this particular thing, the faster it manifested. It it became a ritual, a daily ritual. It has to become your daily ritual, beloved. You write that business plan. You come up with the name. You come up with the logo. See that in your head? You know, you physically write out that that business plan, whether you're going to have investors or not. And the next thing you know, beloved, you'll be on your way to your business, physically being in your business, physically having your business. It starts there in the mind, good brother. And you have to okay. become business astute. You have to learn business turn. You start right now. The business may manifest a year or two from now, but you start right now. You get you a dictionary of business terms. You start buying the business magazines, uh, Forbes and Fortune. Magazine, Inc., Black Enterprise. It's all about the consciousness. You got to start okay. right now, beloved. You could have it. You could have it. You can't be tripping. Mm-hmm. I don't have the money. I started these herbal business, man. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any money, but I had will. I had an idea. I had creativity. I had passion. I had a whole bunch of knowledge, and I put it all together, and my life changed. My life changed, man. It's been a magical. I could die tonight, and I'm straight. I ain't got no regrets because I've done everything I wanted to do up until December 31st, 2015. I live on my own terms. It's a magical yeah. life. It started in my mind. It started in my I had to be bold enough to take over my mind and be different. <laughs> Be different, exactly. That's why I have a different lifestyle. I have different results. That's why I don't deal with my family. 
Uh, Uncle Larry trying to get in touch with you. What the hell does Uncle Larry want? Larry wants some goddamn money. No. Larry been wanting money ever since I've been on planet Earth. No. Larry got some goddamn <laughs> money. He went to Lost Wages, Nevada, and blew the damn money. Big old chick. I'm going to right. Vegas. What, what, like, you get some money, you're going to Las Vegas. For what? To give it to them. To give it to the corporations in Las Vegas. No. Right. Exactly. Give a damn who you are. You dig? Yeah. Oh man! So you go ahead, I, I, man. If I, I you really that. want it, hey, if you really want it, man, then you make it happen straight up. This man. is the matrix, it, man. It, this is energy. To, yeah, to me, it, to me, is it, 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 no longer a want. You know what I mean? Because I feel, I feel as though, like you know, I, I'm, I'm too. I, I was, I was told by, I was told by, you know, people that I was with coming up, you know, at twenty, you know, if you ain't making a hundred grand by the time you're twenty five a year, then you know, you got, you got to rethink some things. That's man, a hundred grand. Everybody talk about this six digit thing, man. Trust me, six, six digits ain't nothing, brother. I mean, I really thought that I would never live to see seven digits. And trust me, bro, when you get it, I mean, it, it phases. It's like people on drugs, man. You know, they whatever that drug is, bam, they get high. You know, and they do it again, they they don't get as high. You know, and so that's why they have to go on to a stronger drug. It's the same thing with money, beloved. You know, you hit six okay. digits, man, you become numb. You become desensitized, right? It's like, well, damn, you know, I want seven digits. You get seven digits, man, and that don't do it for you anymore. And that's why you have people, man, they either get greedy or they they increase in aspiration. They aspire or desire for more. Never satisfied, mm. you know. And that may sound negative, but it's really not a negative thing to desire more. Just like myself, I desire more money. Why? To do more. I know what I want to do. Right. So more allows you to do more. Money is nothing but an equalizer. Money only allows you to do more of what you're already doing, period, period. I was already buying CDs. Now I buy more CDs. I was already buying documentaries. Now I buy more documentaries. I was already buying crystals. Now I buy more crystals. Money is an equalizer. It is an amplifier. Okay. It allows us more what we're already doing. Let, let me ask you this because um, I'm un, I'm unfamiliar with the um, well with the whole astrology thing. All I know is I, I was born on in, on May 12th. <laughs> you a Taurus, okay? Hey, that's a positive. You already got something working for you. You a Taurus, man. We are the money sign, man. I like that about Taurus. We're the money sign, man. And our opposite is Scorpio, so we got to look out, you know, for the Scorpio energies because you know, as Taurus, you know, we deal with the shadow traits. You see, but you a Taurus, May 12th. You're a Taurus, man. Yeah. So that's money sign. That's material. Those are your resources. But as you were saying, yeah, I mean, so I, I, because I was, because I read books like The Master Key to Riches, you know, uh, Think and Grow oh. Rich, and, and you know, yes, like those, like those two books, like that. And I'm trying to figure it. Out, and I'm trying to just trying to make it work. Like, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on the subconscious. The subconscious, right. you know, and, and and what I'm trying to do, I'm I'm trying to access, you know, to get it to where, you know, I can get my thoughts and you know my 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 desires, you know, firmly implanted in my subconscious to where it's innate. I just think about it without even forcing myself to. Repetition of a message constitutes mental programming. You have to be responsible for mentally programming yourself. Repetition of okay. a message constitutes mental programming. What is the message, sir? Who writes that message for you? Nobody but me, right? All day long. Nobody, nobody so, can write that message for me. Right. So That's right. So that message has to be written by you. And that message has to encode a desire that you would like to hold in your hands or to physically or materially manifest. And you have to program yourself. It's your mind, or it should be. Oh, Fertile man. soil, where you plant the seeds, man. Ideas are a seed that take root and grow, that shoot up. And we all got that, man. I know it's a lot of F-stuff stuff going on in the Matrix, man. But, see, that's just one side of it. See, we missed that beautiful side, man. You know, yeah. we children, we, you know, we 
here and we talk about the, the fairy tale. You know, a lot of people are like, man, you into fairy tales. But no, man, there's a real side of like the fairy tale, man. It's not that Cinderella type stuff there, but the fairy tale, man, you know, that that is that that life, man, that adventure, man, that you desire. It may sound crazy or, or far fetched to other people, you see, but it's your reality. It's your reality. And nobody creates your reality for you but you. So if you know what you want, you can have it. And that's for all of us here in the Matrix. But they got us hemmed up, caught up on Cosby and we in the racism. You know, we in the Trump. We into that bullshit election that's about to come up that ain't going to do you no good. No matter yeah, what we come to do you no good. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you gotta tell me. I always said left wing and right wing is just two parts of a dirty bird. So you got to start doing you, good brother. You said you not wanting is man. It's like this, bro. You either want or you either have. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like I need have. success now. You know, I feel like I need it now. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't wait no longer. You know, I. I because your story is success similar is to mine. Attitude. Success is an attitude, beloved. See, this whole thing is mental, bro. This whole thing is mental. This whole thing is mental, man. You have to use your mind. And you don't stop there. That You have to learn to use your words. When I was coming into money consciousness, you know, I developed my own unique vocabulary. You see? Because... We don't just have our own financial code, sexual code, what have you, but see, we also got our own lexicon, okay? Or we okay. got our own word code. So I was like, y'all, oh, man, thanks. Oh, thanks a million, bro. Instead of saying thank you, I would say thanks a million. You got that? You bet. Yeah. I'm using I, words. I, 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 you yeah. dig? Yeah. And it worked. Because it it, could, it, it it it's it's called abundance. You said thanks to me, and that that that's gratitude and abundance. That's right. I grew up in the hood, so we had certain dudes named Money. Yeah, hey, yo, what up, Money? So said, yeah, oh, yeah. Point, that's gonna be my nickname, Money. Money Maara. Look, man, you create your word, man. You create your vocabulary, man. You create your style, man. You you create you. And it, and it, it, yeah. it works, man. It, it, this stuff works, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just, I get taken aback, man, from just listening to myself talk about this stuff, man, because I remember my struggle days. Man, I had a lot of struggle days, man. Broke, then I'm oh, uh, didn't feel yeah. good. That shit didn't feel good, man. Like, god damn, you know, where's it gonna come from? You know, you ain't sleeping good, man. You know, you can't watch movies. You can't concentrate. It's toe up. You can't even make love, mm. man. Your mind ain't straight. The money ain't straight. Toe right. up. <laughs> I know. I've been there, you know, going to the, the, the super casket, the supermarket, man, and shit, counting shit, you know, it, putting orange juice down yeah. there, that's $2 and shit. Get this there, that's 2 this that's $4, and you know, uh, ma'am, uh, I'm going to put this box of uh, whatever it is back. Are you counting shit up in your head. You're right. You know? Yeah. You, 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 you can get the cards. You go pray and hope the shit going to go through. Yeah, I, I do that at Whole Foods all the time. All the time. So you counting. <laughs> I have to go to the bookstores. I'll be counting the price of the books. I have to do all of that stuff, man. That shit don't feel good, man. You know, I mean, I look back on it, man, you know, and I'm grateful, you know, predicated upon where I came from because where I came from were the lessons, man, that I learned. I extracted the insight. I learned and I got on the other side, you know, but let me say this, just because you get on the other side don't mean that you straight, man, because it's levels to this, man. There's levels to struggle, man. That's why you hear about millionaires right. and billionaires man, struggling, okay, because they're a millionaire now, but shit, now they're trying to buy a hotel, $30 million. Now they got to make move to come up with the thirty million. They're a millionaire. They only got twenty. They ten million short. Right. When Donald Trump this is years ago, you know, he's a millionaire filing bankruptcy. You know, making loans. Lee Iacocca, 
You got to study rich people, mm-hmm. man. You got to uh, study rich people because when you study these people, man, you're going to find out that they had their struggles too, man. Don't think, man, you're going to get to six digits, seven digits, and you're going to have no issues, man. Oh, no, 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 no. That's no. The I mean, for, for, yeah, for whatever rewards you get, there's a price that got to be paid. Gonna all, but you're going to always be paying, bro. You're going to always because you do have to invest money in order to earn money, you know. And when you're in this business game, man, risk is involved. There's there's unskillful risk, and then there's skillful risk. You know, I never thought okay. that I would see certain amounts of money, but at the same time, man, like dealing with other people in business, you know, taking risks, what have you, man, I've seen hundreds of thousands of dollars just straight squandered, man, but it comes with the game, you see, and it's not a situation where, like, it's lost, and that's just it, because, you know, if you got $100,000 and you lose all of it, you effed up, like in that Mark Wahlberg uh, movie, The Gambler, yeah. mom's giving $400,000 and all of it is gone. And he don't have another four hundred thousand dollars coming in every month. That's when you messed up. And see, that's most people. That's my family members. Mm-hmm. They'll come into a settlement. They'll get five, ten, fifteen, twenty seven thousand dollars one time and blow it. And these same people say, right. "Man, if I got a million dollars, man, nephew, if I want a million dollars, man, I'll give me a house." You dumb motherfucker, you. The hell you mean you gonna get you a house, man, a mansion? If you get a million dollars, that's stupid. Right. How the hell are you gonna maintain it? How are you gonna exactly. maintain it? How are you gonna pay the water? How you gonna pay the electric bill? How you gonna pay the property taxes? Yeah. You see, and that's how a lot of people win the lottery, man, and end up broke in one year, two broke. year time flat. Goddamn right, because like I said, man, you know, money is equalizer and amplifier. It only allows us to do more of what we're already doing. Period. Period. Well, good brother, it's been great chopping it up with you, brother. We got a few more callers on the line who may have questions or a comment about tonight's topic, which is the metaphysics or mental science of money. You keep doing your thing, brother. Use that mind, brother. Start visualizing. Start visualizing. Will, Start man. imagining. Yes, sir, brother. And make your dream a reality, man. Live that dream I with will, open man. eyes. All right, All right man. Brother. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe out there. You got a good brother. Peace. Okay, we're going to the 305. I believe this is Birmingham. Call it from the 305. Are you with us? Yes, sir. What's going on, dude? I'm from uh, it's Miami, Florida. 305 is Miami. All right. Okay. I never said I was perfect, you know, but I do. <laughs> 305. From the Miami, uh, yes, man. State your, state your name, good brother. Yes, sir. My name is Rakeith. Uh I called in on the first show Rock- that you did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, good brother. It is, uh, I have you got a question or comment? Yes, sir. Yes, two, sir. Um, two quick questions. Well, the second one yes, might not sir. be as quick. But the first question is a law question. Uh, what would you recommend for someone who wants to um, understand the legalese? You know, they want to, because, you know, law is, that's a whole language in itself. And you don't want to, I don't want to be thinking them. Thinking that the words that they're using is the, the regular definition when they have the legal definition. So I want to have uh, a full and complete understanding, a legal understanding of the, the definition of the, the statutes and case laws and, and things like that. Yeah, that, that that's that's going to take some some time, good brother. But I do have a show scheduled in uh, January on law, introduction to law. That is a very common question that I get from a lot of people. Uh, to who do you, where do I start in law? I desire to become legally astute. I desire to become a jurisperitist. Uh, where and how do I start? And uh, it, it would actually take several shows, um, you know, okay. for people to, like, really get it. I can do it in one show as far as helping people learn where and how to uh, start, you know. Um, and you're going to start with Black Law Dictionary, beloved, uh, fifth edition. Black Law Dictionary, 5th fifth, fifth edition, you can find that online, eBay, or Amazon.com. They're economically uh, priced. And just like how Malcolm X read the dictionary, you're going to read the legal dictionary, man. And, man, it's some serious nuggets in Black Law Dictionary. That one even has the case law in it. You know, after the 5th edition, it took the case law out. But the case law, man, is in the Black Law Dictionary, 5th edition. And you also find it in the 4th and, and the 3rd. And the and then, brother, you got to get your constitution. You got to get the federal constitution. You got to get the state 
uh, constitution, and you have to learn those bad boys, you know, uh, learn the preambles, learn the articles, uh, and, and learn the, the rights pertaining to uh, citizens. And then after that, beloved, you got to get into the statutes, you know. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's why most citizens don't yeah. deal with law. They leave it up to a liar or a lawyer. And that's how and where most people uh, get screwed dealing with these damn lawyers, man. You know, these founding fathers of, of, of America, these guys knew law. They were legally astute, and most of them, and most of them did not go to law school. Abraham Lincoln did not go to law, law school. He was a lawyer, but he didn't go to, to law school. And here right. uh, in this matrix here, most people think in, that in order to be a lawyer or an attorney that you have to go to law school. That's not true. All you have to do is take the bar and pass that bad boy. When you did with the bar, the BAR, the British Accreditation Regency, now you open up a whole different can of worms, man, you know, because it's really not about law. It's really about policy, man. You know, it's about policy, right. man. Great Britain or English policy, man. That's why attorneys, man, are called Esquire. Man, that's a British term there, man. You know, this is why you can go to jail for practicing law without a license, man. Hey, this is British law, right? And it's copyrighted, right. man. It is trademarked, man. So you cannot use it without a license. So you have to get a right. lawyer's license or an attorney license. I'll stop right there and I'll save it for like a future show. But uh, okay. this law thing, man, is really heavy, man. It's really heavy. It's, it's really deep, man. And just like how I'm talking about, like, you know, finances, I mean, I talk about, like, a lot of things, man, and I get a great joy from it, man, because of the experiences, you know, with these subject matters, right, you know, as far as tangible results. And when it comes to law, man, I had a great time in law. I didn't win every case, but I won most cases, man. I never went to law school. I taught myself law. And I empowered myself, man. It was one of the most empowering feelings, man, you know, to win a traffic case, man. And my last traffic case was 2011, man. That felt better than the one in 2002, man. You know, uh, awesome feeling, man. And doing your own legal pleading, man, and knowing the language, man. You start watching legal movies like A Civil Action with John Travolta. You know, you start watching Rounders with my man, uh, Matt Damon. You start watching movies like Class Action. You start watching movies like And Justice for All with Al Pacino. You know, and you, you start learning the lingo, man. You know, you start learning to walk, man. You know, you get you a briefcase, man. You know, you you know, you know style yourself after an attorney, man. You know, you're not an attorney, but you style yourself, you style yourself after one. So you get to the point where the clerks don't know if you're a student or an attorney. You know, the judge don't know. You know, uh, excuse me, sir, are, are you in law school? Uh, no, I'm not, Your Honor. You know, the clerks. Excuse me, did you did you type up this motion here? Um, yes, I did. You know, I mean, people are baffled, right. man. That powerful stuff is very empowering, man. I don't have my run-ins with the FDA and the FBI and the DEA and the, and the city of Glendale and the county of Los Angeles, man, and the child support and all type of stuff, man, and I'm still here, man. So even though we're dealing with this Patriot Act, and a whole bunch of crazy stuff, man. These people never gave us due process of law uh, as to what's going on in this corporation here, man. So I say learn this stuff, man, and use it to your advantage, man. You know, I, we're going to be dropping a yeah. lot on this show here, man. We're going to be dealing with these damn, they got something now called these debt buyers where they're buying debt, man, going after people, man. I got some good information uh, for the people on that, man. We're going to have some great shows on traffic, man. We're going to have some great shows on parking tickets, man. We're going to have some great shows on child support, man. We got we got a lot on Chopping Up Live, man. It's not enough time in the day, man. Not enough time in the day yes, for all this, this good information, this good knowledge, man. We don't have to be these goddamn sucker butts, man, and, you know, apathetic people, man, you know, depressed and pissed off and fearful. It don't have to be like that, man. When you hear me say knowledge is power, I mean that shit, man. Knowledge is power, especially if it is applied. You have a second question or right. comment, beloved? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so um, in regards to that, so when I'm just um, learning um, the state constitution and statutory law and all of that, for the words I don't know, just turn to Black Law Dictionary. Black Law Dictionary, beloved. Black Law Dictionary. Okay. Hey, start watching the legal shows, man. You go on Amazon, man, and you and you order the legal shows like the practice. You know, you know, you get Matlock. You know, you get Boston Legal. That's how you're going to learn. You know, like in in business. Okay. I haven't said it thus far, but. Uh, one of the greatest shows, man, that taught me about business, man, was Dallas, the original series Dallas, man. Even though they were in the old business, it was still business. And, man, they dropped a lot of cold gemstones, man, in Dallas, man. Jock Ewan, especially that damn J.R. Ewan, 
but it really helped me, man. And not and not just business, but also law. Because, you know, sometimes I have to morph, man. I have to morph, man, and I have to, you know, deal with certain people on their level, you know. And J.R. Ewing right. taught me well. Taught me right. well. I keep it righteous, uh-huh. man. But if I got to go there, I got to go there. When I was dealing with D. Erd and their attorney, man, I had to go there, man. And I'm telling you, without it, man, I'd be towed up. I would have been towed up without yeah. that knowledge, bro. You know, so I learned from Dallas, man. So you go get the get the, the law television series, man. Uh, again, uh, the practice, uh, Boston, uh, legal, uh, Matlock, any show uh, that's on now or, you know, in the, in the last, uh, you know, 10 years, last decade, or in the past, if it's available, and most stuff uh, is available on uh, DVD and Blu-ray, you get it and you watch it as a student, man, and you watch it with all three eyes, bro, and you get that knowledge. And you get Black Law Dictionary, man. You know, you just start looking for the words, man, the certain words, man. Maybe that you, you probably can't pronounce them. You know, anything that's challenging, man, you know, that's what you want to go after. That which gives you a challenge, man. Write it down. Read the definition. And you say to yourself, how can I apply this today? Because Black Law Dictionary got a lot of old stuff. Stuff, man, stuff that goes back to the 1700s, 1800s, you got to ask yourself, man, how can I apply this today? And you're probably saying, well, damn, how would I even know to ask that question, man? Then you get on the phone and you call your local uh, court. You call your local court, man, it's trial and error. You know, I found out about a lot of documents in Black Law Dictionary, man. You know, some I filed, the state of California didn't recognize. Others, the state of California recognized. The federal court recognized. Trial and error. Beloved, that's how you learn. And then you have the advantage over an attorney because attorneys, attorneys are fragmented, man. You know, everything here in the matrix is, is uh, divided up because this is the land of, uh, of conquering. You know, everybody's conquered, you know, because they divide. You got men divided, you know, from, from uh, the women, the black divided from the white, the rich divided from the poor. You know, we get conquered here in the matrix, man. And, you know, the foundation of, of conquering is separation or division. So everything is, is, is segmented, man. You go to the hospital, man, you got the endocrinologist, man, you got the cardiologist, you got the podiatrist, man, you got the optometrist. The whole body is fucking fragmented or separated or divided, man. And the same thing with law. A lawyer that practices civil law does not practice criminal law. And a lawyer that's involved in, in criminal law does not deal with family law, okay? And an attorney that deals with family law does not deal with corporate law. You know, they, every, everything is broken down, man, regulated right. and, and ruled, you know, for purposes of control. Um, you know, but also, man, for disempowering uh, people, man. So when you learn law on your own, man, you're learning universal law, you're learning common law, you're learning constitutional law, you're learning statutory law, you're learning administrative law, you're learning family law, business law, criminal law, civil law, and all the other types of laws, beloved. You become Bruce Lee. And that's why I created a legal concept called judicial ju. Uh, judicial G. Kundo after my man Bruce Lee, who I met in Amsterdam several times, man, and learned how to be who I am and do what I do in law. I learned that from Mr. Bruce Lee, man, and that's what my legal concept is called judicial G. Kundo. Yes, sir. And I will leave you with that, um, good brother, but that's where you start, and we're going to be doing some shows on law in the very uh, near future. Did you have another question or comment, beloved? I got a couple of more callers here. How are we doing with the time? Hold on here, good brother. Oh, okay, yeah, so we're cool. Yeah, uh, do you have another uh, question or comment, good brother? Uh, yes, um, really quick. I wanted to ask you, um, yeah. when you was with your first wife, um, what yeah. made you, what, what, how did you really just build up the courage and boldness to just say, I got to bounce? I mean, because I know that um, you all had a, you just you, you got to be true together. to yourself, man. You got to be true to yourself, man. Even though you love a person, man, you got a child by a person, man. You got to be true to yourself, man. It, it, it's it's just the only way, you know. And you got to deal with that pain, you know. You got to deal with that pain. Rose Quartz came into my life after that, but I had to learn to, um, you know, process pain without allowing my heart to shut down, you know. And I would have never right. got that lesson had I not been bold, you know, to exit. Uh, that relationship, man, you know, and that relationship allowed me to, to enter into the last, you know, relationship. And you just keep it moving and, and grooving, but you got to be true to yourself. You got to ask the question, do I love this person more than I love myself? You see, because you was on the scene with yourself from day one. You know what I'm saying? You was with yourself 15 years ago, but the person you just hooked up with last year, what was that person 15 years ago? You see, so you've always had you. You've always been with you. So you always got to be true to yourself, 
because wherever you go, there you are. You got to be true and real to self. To thy own self, always be true. Yes, so that's sir. how I, I did that. I, 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 I'm skillfully, I'm skillfully, all the stuff that people have said about me over the years, I'm skillfully narcissistic, I'm skillfully egotistical, I'm skillfully uh, conceited, I'm skillfully all of that stuff. I love Tehuti Madra, and I do not apologize for it, man. And there's, there's, there's knowledge in that, man. you got a lot of people who want to be like, you know, but the truth of the matter is they don't like themselves. So other people don't like them. And the people right. that that can accept themselves and that like themselves and that love themselves, those are the sap suckers that are attract everybody. You got people I can't stand that motherfucker. Ugh, look at him, he's so fucking arrogant, what have you. But I kind of like him though. I'm attract. He do something to me. That that's where that comes from. You see. <laughs> so be true to yourself, good brother. Be true to yes, yourself. Sir. All right, good yes, brother. Sir. We got to move on to the, Thank to the you next for everything. Call love it. Hey, hey, my pleasure, okay. good brother. Like I said, we will be having some shows on law in the future. Okay, yes, I am going to move caller from the 347. 347. Let me see, 347. Is that New York? Let's see if I am right or wrong. Caller from 347, are you with us? Caller? Okay, I don't think that this caller is with us. So let's try and go to the next caller here, which is 909, and I think that is, no, we're going to go to nothing. There's anonymous. Anonymous caller, are you with Caller? Okay, we do not have an anonymous. Let's see here. Let's go back to the 347. Caller from 347, are you with us? I can hear some noise in the background, so you're with us, but you're not with us, which is cool because I got to get ready and wrap up this show. Hell, I could talk all night long. All night long. Anyway, let me uh, finish up on some things pertaining to uh, the metaphysics uh, and the mental science of money, you know, pertaining uh, to myself. I've said a lot of things, uh, but then again, because I know my story, I really didn't say uh, much, you know, about my story. I've had all type of experiences, man, with with um, with money, with with wealth and prosperity, and all those things um, on my level, you know, um, and it's just my level. Um, and a lot of things that I'm saying, you got a lot of people that are saying it and on a much larger le- level, dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars, dealing with billions of dollars, dealing with hundreds of billions of dollars. And uh, when I think about those individuals, all it does is remind me that that is very possible for myself. I mean, really, the sky is the limit, you know, and we don't have to live the way that a lot of us are living. You know, we don't have to live paycheck to paycheck. You know, we don't. You know, we don't have to make ends meet. And making ends meet is stupid to me. You know, making ends meet. It's like having two hooks on a wall and, you know, you attach string to them and you pull them together. You know, that's, no, that's. That's not healthy, <laughs> making ends meet. The, the roof will fall in on you behind, you know. Uh, crazy, we have like these uh, crazy sayings, you know, saving for a rainy day. That's what my pops used to tell me, you know, son, you got to save for a rainy day, you know. And I had no idea that saving for a rainy day created a rainy day. I had no, had no idea, you know. And so when I became conscious, I started uh, saving for a, a, a bright day. You know, which is like a vacation or, you know, some type of a dream uh, trip or what have you. I started saving for that, not for a rainy day. Rainy day was when the car broke down, you know, and you got to go to the car shop and, you know, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what the um, uh. diagnosis is for the car or diagnostic. And, uh, you know, you're waiting there like, damn, what can it be? Shit, whatever it is. I hope it don't cost a lot of money, you know. Yeah, it's this it's crazy, man. We it, life life doesn't have to be like that. It's a choice, you know. You don't have to be in the market counting shit, you know, on the stand, you know, and putting stuff back, you know, because your limit is fifty dollars, you know. So they ringing stuff up, and you're the forty one, the forty four, the forty seven. Then you got to stop or mm, get that. Let me see, what's that? Forty nine, what have you? Okay, cool, I can get that. Boom. But everything else got to go back, you know. I, I've been there. Not a good feeling. Uh, I choose not to 
uh, experience that. And I just, I do me, you know, I work those laws, you know, I, I work those laws that were with me from day one, but I, I wasn't uh, taught. Most of us were not taught uh, by parents, uh, relatives uh, in school, the public school system. And we're just not taught, you know, uh, a few people are taught, you know, the quote unquote fortunate ones, you know, they are, are taught. And a lot of times that's because of uh, of karma. You know, they were very charitable in a, in a past life, what have you, um, you know, and, and, and donated and, you know, made themselves beneficiaries. Uh, not beneficiaries, but uh, well, some people were uh, pursuant to, like, trust or what have you and, and you know, gave, gave out money, donations, uh, uh, what have you. Uh, and so a lot of that is dealing, like, with uh, karma, you know, it's like uh, the concept of uh, being born with a, a golden spoon in your mouth, you know. We say people that's born into, into wealth are born with a, a silver spoon or a gold spoon in their mouth. Uh, I think here in the West is the sil- silver spoon, born with a, a silver silver spoon. As a matter of fact, I think they had a show with Ricky Schroeder called Silver Spoons, and he was a, a little wealthy uh, lad. But that whole concept deals with uh, uh, karma and uh, because the universe is very fair, you know, it's very fair. A lot of us look at rich people and be like, damn, you know, why does God love this person more than us? And it has nothing to do with God. It, it deals with uh, karma. So when you understand the metaphysics of being born with a silver spoon, you understand that these are individuals that labored, uh, set up businesses, or they labored hard, and they did not live in a in a particular life dispensation to enjoy the fruit of their labor. So what they did uh, was they set themselves up by leaving a will, having a trust, having a will, and leaving um, a property or making their grandchildren or great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren um, heir of their their dynasty or their financial uh, legacy, and so they made their transition, um, or they die, and they reincarnate as their great grandson or their great great grandson. Thereby, they are born into the wealth that they sold, that they started, that they initiated. Remember, they didn't live long uh, long enough in a, in, in a particular lifetime. Usually, that lifetime that initiated everything you know they did the groundwork they did the the sowing but they did not live long enough for the reaping so they reap predicated upon an incarnation as the great grandson or the great great grandson or uh, in some other capacity maybe they are uh, adopted a rich couple adopts uh you know uh, the baby that is reincarnated to enjoy uh, the fruit of his or her labor. So that's the, the metaphysics of, uh, you know, born with a silver spoon in the mouth. I can go on and on to the break of dawn, but it is time for me to uh, end this show. It is uh, New Year's Eve, and the people on the East Coast, they about to get ready to bring in the so-called uh, New Year, uh, especially folks out there in, in New York where they really get down. Nobody can touch New York when it comes to celebrating the so-called New Year. And it is a so-called New Year for a reason. Um, I could do a whole show on that, and I probably will. But with that, people, I'm going to get ready and end this show. I want to thank everybody for uh, being with me tonight, uh, but more importantly for bearing with me because, man, we have some serious uh, technological challenges in this show today. And it's predicated upon Charter. Um, I got a new uh, router. Actually, updated everything, so everything I got is actually uh, new. Something was going on with the phone, too, which is also by Charter. So I'm going to get them out to look at this thing here and make sure we got things hooked up right and and, um, correctly here so, you know, we can keep the the show flowing and uh, the host is not disconnected four and five times (laughs) in one show. And uh, so that these uh, questions can be answered. So with that, people, that's going to do it for this show. Uh, Join us this uh, Sunday, which I believe is January 2nd, for another edition of Chopping Up Live. We're going to be finishing up with uh, relationship issues and challenges in the matrix. On behalf of TehutiMatraHerd.com and TehutiMatra.com, I am Tehuti Matra signing off from Chopping It Up Live. 
Peace and love, and be safe out there as you bring in the so-called New Year.